Okay, investigate properties of triangles. Let's look at 3.1 and investigate the triangles that we looked in chap that we saw in chapter 2 and we're going to look at in more depth in chapter 3. So, a centroid is the point where the three medians of a triangle intersect. This particular point, the centroid, is known as the center balance of a triangle. So the idea is you could balance your finger on a rotating triangle at the centroid. Now if you remember the idea of a median is you have a triangle and the median is where it crosses through a vertex and passes through the midpoint of the opposite side. So this would be considered the midpoint. So let's uh, Let's look at, there we go, okay. So there's your midpoints of all the sides and each median bisects the area of a triangle. So basically tr uh, cuts the triangle into two parts. It actually cuts the tr area of the triangle in half. So the purple line will cut that triangle into two equal half areas. So two equal parts. So does the blue line and so does the gray line. A centroid divides each median into two parts. One is twice the length of the other. So right here, what that means is this line and this line right here, this line is twice as long as this little line. And the same for this. This line is twice as long as this little line. And the same for the purple. This line is twice as long as this line. So one is twice the length of the other. The segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and half its length. Well, what does that mean? Well, if I draw a line connecting two midpoints, this particular line is parallel to this side right here and not only is it parallel, but this one is also half the length of this side right here. So if I found the length of this, I would know the length of this. And the same with all of these. So again, here's another one joining midpoints. This line is parallel to this line right here. And not only is it parallel, but it this line is half the length of this side of this triangle. And the same can be said for this as well. This one and this one. They're parallel and this line is double the size of this line right here. Alright, now when you know the coordinates of the vertices, you can calculate the length of a side using the length formula and the slope of a side. It is important in this whole unit that you calculate length and slope. Both length and slope have a, play a significant part in geometric shapes. Moving on now. A triangles, now triangles in general, are three-sided shapes that can be classified as scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. Now, scaling and isosceles, scaling means each side is a unique length. Isosceles means that two sides are the same length. And equilateral means all three sides have the same length. So, by knowing this though, what we can do is use length to determine, classify the type of triangle. Now, scaling and isosceles can be classified further. It can be classified as a right triangle. Now, you can classify right triangles by looking at their slopes, where two slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. Okay, basically slope 1 times slope 2 is equal to negative 1, or the lengths satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Now, be, don't be confused. This concept right here does not mean what some of you think it means. This means that if I multiply the two individual slopes, the result will be negative 1. The exception to this rule, folks, is when it's a horizontal and vertical line. 
horizontal line has a slope of zero. A vertical line has a slope undefined. So those two are the exception to the rule. But if you know that an undefined, you have an undefined slope, the negative reciprocal of that one is going to be zero, automatically, folks, they're perpendicular. You should even recognize them beforehand. All right, something else. I mentioned earlier that you need to know the slopes and lengths of sides of a triangle because they play an important part. Here's why. Even if you didn't have to find the lengths, you could use the slopes to determine if it's a right triangle. So no longer can you just use the lengths. Sometimes, folks, you need to use the uh, slopes to determine right angles. And we're going to see why later on. All right, next, 3.2. So we're going to move to 3.2 because 3.1 talks about different properties and theorems. 3.2 is we're verifying these properties. So we can use midpoint length and slope formulas to verify properties of specific triangles. For example, we can classify triangle MLMN with the vertices L, M, and N as listed, and we need to classify it. So what you should do is when you classify, you need the length formula. Okay, so we're going to find the lengths of all the sides, LM. MN and LN. Now important to note, look at the way I did the length formulas, okay? I know this is whipping through very quickly, but I want you to notice how the length formulas are calculated. I took L and wrote the coordinates in separate set of brackets. X's first, then Y's. Then I took the zero, uh, the y values for both points, so the x's for both points, the y's for both points, and then I subtracted them. But notice there's a plus sign here. Why did this plus sign show up? Well, if I take the x for m is 2, and n is minus negative 3. What's 2 minus negative 3? Hopefully you're thinking, oh yeah, that's 2 plus 3. That's where that plus came about. Don't be fooled into folks doing it. Um, if you can't remember that, just put minus minus beside each other to remind yourself that you're going to put a plus. And then you have, you're adding in between there, just like Pythagorean theorem. We're using basically Pythagorean theorem. This was discussed in unit one. All right, ultimately, here are our two, three values. What is this telling us? Well, folks, this is telling us that mm, I think we have a isosceles triangle. Now, here comes the answers again. I'm just going to pop them up where we have more room. So here they are. This is LM. This is MN. Notice I'm not getting the final answers here. I'm just using the root answers. All right, and LN. Okay, so left side, right side, we're checking for pi perpendicular. Remember, we need to check for perpendicular, so we use Pythagorean theorem, and we check for Pythagorean theorem, and we find out that it is a right isosceles triangle. When we have an isosceles triangle, we have to remember that we need to further classify it to see if it is a right triangle. Even though by inspection you might be able to tell, you still need to prove it, and the only way I know that you've checked it is by doing a check, like so. So you're going to check to see if it's perpendicular, and because it is, that means that the two smaller sides added together, square the two smaller sides and add them together, has to equal the square of the larger side, and it does, so therefore the Pythagorean theorem is, is, um, is solved. All right, is, sorry, is true. Because the Pythagorean theorem is true here, we can say it is a right isosceles triangle. Okay, let's moving forwards. Let's, let's look at an example. Example two, verify that the centroid of triangle with vertices O, P, and Q divides one median into a two to one ratio. So give, finding any median you're to take the median and find out if that centroids, 4, 0, actually divides the median into a 2 to 1 ratio. So a centroid is always calculated by adding up all the x's, taking the average of the x's, 
and the average of the y's. That is how a centroid is calculated. A centroid is given to us in the question, but maybe sometimes you might not give, be given that. So this is how you do the fast way to find a centroid. Once you do that, it's easy to find out that it definitely will be 4, 0. All right, so we have coordinates. We want to graph this, C, P, Q, just to give us an idea. And we have O as well, graph O, P, Q, and we want to find the median. Median is the mid, the median goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So we do that. Let's find it for the median of OQ, so it cuts at the midpoint and cuts through and goes through the vertex. So the midpoint is approximately over here. We need to verify that, folks. You can't use this as an approximation. You can have an idea that it's there, but you need to prove to me geometrically that that definitely is the midpoint. So the midpoint of OQ is 0 plus 4 divided by 2 and 0 plus 4 divided by 2, and OQ is going to be 2, 2. And it looks like it's at 2, 2, and it is 2, 2. So we're pretty good. All right, we've checked that. Now, we need to know that the centroid actually divides this median into a ratio of 2 to 1. That means that CP should be twice as long as MC. How are we going to do that? Well, hopefully, you're thinking, oh, Let's find the length of MC. Let's find the length of CP. CP should be twice as long as MC, based on the information. So let's do that. Length of MC is the following. Length of CP is the following. And then you want to take CP and divide by MC, and you get this. So the median from P is divided into a ratio of 2 to 1 by C. That means CP is twice as long as MC. Now I want you to look at root 8 and root 32. I know that some of your calculators are not giving you the proper, are giving you a different answer that you're used to. So I just want to show you quickly that root 8 is equal to the square root of 4 times 2, right? Well, what is the square root of 4? Well, hopefully you're thinking, okay, square root of 4 is 2. And that's right, folks, it is 2. What does that mean? Well, let's go back for a sec. Square root of 4 is 2. So what we can do with this question, so let me just erase that and do that a little bit better. Square root of 8 is equal to square root of 4 times 2. Square root of 4 is 2. And then you leave the root 2 inside. And that's how the calculator gets 2 root 2. And then for root 32, your calculator might have given you 4 root 2, because that is equal to 16 times 2. So square root of 16 is 4, that's why there's a 4 on the outside, and 2 on the inside. Anyways, we'll do a little bit more in class about this a little bit later on, but it's just something that I know your calculators are giving you an answer, and you're trying to figure out why it's giving you that. All right. Now that we've discovered that it divides into ratio 2 to 1, I'm actually going to stop this video and move on to part 2, or the next example, folks. On the next, actually, that's the end of this video. Wonderful. All right, folks, that's the end of 3.2. We'll move to the next video for 3.3. Take care. Have a numerical day.